Welcome to the Bar Exam Toolbox Podcast. Today, we're excited to have Ryan Zyke from UWorld joining us on the podcast to discuss bar prep. Your Bar Exam Toolbox hosts are Allison Monahan and Lee Burgess. That's me. We are here to demystify the bar exam experience so you can study effectively, stay sane, and hopefully pass and move on with your life. We're the co-creators of the Law School Toolbox, the Bar Exam Toolbox, and the career-related website, Career Dicta. Allison also runs the Girl's Guide to Law School. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review on your favorite listening app and check out our sister podcast, the Law School Toolbox Podcast. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us via the contact form on barexamtoolbox.com, and we'd love to hear from you. And with that, let's get started. Welcome back to the Law School Toolbox Podcast. Today, we are excited to have Ryan Zyke from UWorld on the podcast discussing bar prep. Ryan, thanks for spending part of your morning. I guess it's my morning, your afternoon with me. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for taking the yeah, time. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, That's- thanks for uh, having me. I'm really excited to uh, be part of this. Absolutely. So to get things kicked off, can you share a bit more about yourself and how you got interested in working in bar prep? Yeah, absolutely. So I've always been interested in education. My mom is a professor of nursing. I have several relatives who are uh, in education as as teachers or principals. And so I've always had kind of education in my background. I went to law school at Creighton University. And there I was a writing tutor and a Civ Pro TA during my time there. And Those experiences were some of my uh, highlights during law school. I really enjoyed working with students, working with faculty on different projects, and I found the work extremely rewarding and noticed that it helped me become a better researcher, a better writer, a better overall student. Once I graduated from law school and took and passed the bar exam in Nebraska, which is a UBE state, I went into practice but was always drawn back toward legal education. And so I was looking one day and saw that there was this company called UWorld. They were just starting to move into the legal market in terms of test prep. And so I applied and ended up being one of the first hires for the legal content team as a content developer. And it's been really amazing to look back at when we started developing the UWorld MBEQ Bank and seeing it launch in 2020 and now seeing the warm reception it's had from students and faculty alike. Great. And I think UWorld is new in the bar exam world, um, but it is not a new company. I know that the platform is used for a lot of different tests and has been used for those tests for a while. So can you share a little bit about how the company branched into the bar exam space? It's just been a few years. Yeah, that's right. Like I mentioned, we launched the UWorld MBEQ Bank right at the beginning of 2020. Um, I think it's a seminal year for many of us and many of the listeners. Uh, So yeah, we've been in the, the legal market for just over two years now, but UWorld, like you said, has been around for much longer. It was the brainchild of our CEO, Dr. Chandra Pemisani, who was a medical student, and when he was in medical school, realized that the materials to prepare him and his fellow medical students for the U.S. medical licensing exam were not great. He didn't find them helpful, Um, they weren't readily accessible for students, and there just wasn't much in the market for students to have options to choose from. So, with the help of his family and a few of his friends, Dr. Chandra created a website where he developed case-based learning questions. He then offered these questions and explanations to medical students. Uh, From there, UWorld was launched and is now the gold standard in medicine. My wife is a current medical student, and so whenever I tell people, uh, her classmates, where I work, they they, they look at me like I'm I'm a part of a a rock group or something, because they all recognize (laughs) the UWorld name. Uh, So that's, that's always very, very flattering. And then I explain, no, I don't 
work on the medical, I work on the legal, and so I have to explain to them what the bar exam is. But uh, yeah, so UWorld it was and is still the gold standard in medicine. Uh, and Dr. Chandra then wanted to expand into other fields, other professional fields, other educational fields. So we eventually did that by developing products for nursing exams, for accounting, finance, college prep, and of course the legal field, which is where the UWorld MBE QBank was launched in 2020. And then we joined forces with Themis Bar Review that very same year. Great. Do you think that there's anything that UWorld learned from helping students prep for these other kinds of tests, like the medical boards? You mentioned the nursing. Um, I guess they're boards. I'm not. I'm not well versed in my <laughs> my nursing exam um, <laughs> lingo. Um, but yeah. were there lessons that can be applied to bar exam study, or is it s- such a different test that um, similar lessons don't apply? So we learned a lot from the other. The other courses that we offer, the other products. Um, obviously, they all have their their nuances. Um, the tests may vary a little bit depending on the uh, depending on each one, but each of the other products has a multiple choice component, and so that's very similar to what students see with the MBE uh, portion of the bar exam. So this helped us to apply to apply UWorld's successful formula in these other products to the MBE and the bar exam field as a whole. Specifically, we emphasize active learning in all of our materials to improve student outcomes. And we do this through our detailed explanations, where we use a method that law students will be very familiar with, the IRAC method, the Issue Rule Application Conclusion. That is how our explanations are set up. So students will be very comfortable when they use our product and they take a question and look at the explanation. So for example, we use the call of the question to focus the student on the issue being tested, what subject it is, what the question is trying to get the students to go for. From there, we lay out a complete rule statement of black letter law from Supreme Court cases, if it's con law or crim pro, to the common law, if it's in torts or contracts. And then we apply the key facts from the question stem to the rule that we have just laid out. And so we walk the student through, say if it's a negligence question, we walk the student through the elements of negligence in the rule, and then we take the facts from the question stem to apply to each element. So why does the, why does the defendant owe the plaintiff the duty? Did the defendant breach that duty? If so, did it actually approximately cause the plaintiff's damages? And so we lay all that out in the application and then come to our conclusion, which is what is the ultimate answer to this question? So we lay all that out and completely explain why the correct answer uh, is correct. And we also are constantly learning through students and faculty who use our product. We look at all the feedback we receive, we update our explanations accordingly to make sure that we're teaching these nuanced issues in a way that everyone can understand. Okay, great. Well, one of the best ways to prepare for the MBE, as I think all of us will agree, is to practice MBE questions. So how can a bar studier use your system to do that most effectively? Um, like reports or how they can sort through topics? How's your product designed to help guide MBE practice? Yeah, and and we firmly agree that practicing MBE questions is is one of the best ways to prepare for the MBE. Uh, I just mentioned how we set up our explanation to help guide students through. Uh, And we offer over 2,000 multiple choice questions in the UWorld MBE QBank, over 1,300 of these questions are licensed from the NCBE. This means that these questions have previously appeared on past bar exams, and they give students an an idea of what they may see when they step into the room on exam day. We took the time to make sure that all of these questions conform to the new NCBE style and formatting guides. So for instance, they used to use proper nouns 
on bar exam questions. They no longer do that. And so we've updated all of those so that they are as realistic as students will see on the exam. And of course, we always update the questions to conform to changes in law. Um, we've had to update quite a few con law questions recently based on the last term, um, but we're making sure that students have the most up-to-date information in all of these questions. As part of these questions, we, offer, we also offer the 200 recently released NCBE questions. We use this as part of our assessment that comes with each student's subscription to the QBank. And we treat these 200 questions, this assessment, as sort of a simulated MBE. We encourage students to take the time to do this assessment under exam-like conditions so that it will help them when they go into the exam room, uh, when it's the MBE portion of the exam, and they'll be ready to go through the three hours in the morning, the three hours in the afternoon with all of these questions. The other questions in our QBank were drafted by content developers like myself to mimic these NCBE style questions. And we developed these simulated questions to have varying levels of difficulty and to cover all of the legal areas that are not covered by the NCBE release questions. And so students can practice in the UWorld QBank and then track their progress with different reports that they can pull up on each subject and so that they can see where they're strong in certain subjects, where they're weak in certain areas and can devote more time to that. We also offer the UWorld QBank to professors for bar prep courses and they can also track their students progress and use this information to assign questions in a certain subject or subtopic or take extra class time to focus in a particular area that many students may be having difficulty with. And some of the features that students can use while they're using or practicing these MBE questions are the flashcard features. Students can develop their own flashcards within the UWorld system, so it's all online. They can create a flashcard with a couple clicks of a button, uh, have a front and back, they can take visuals, they can take wording in an explanation, put it in a flashcard, save it into a specific folder, review these later, and then also go through a study session with these flashcards where they can go through a set and then decide whether they want to see this flashcard in one day, whether they have a pretty good grasp on this concept and maybe want to see it in a week's time. This is all part of our space repetition uh, focus of these flashcards. So we offer that to students within the system. And we also offer students a, an ability to take notes online and keep it all in one place with our My Notebook feature. So students can develop their outline based on subject. They can copy the text, visuals, or write in their own words, however they learn best within the My Notebook feature. And then they can come back to this later and review this information on, these, on their own time. So all of these features are available in our standard online platform, so laptop-based, but we also offer our app, which is really great for students who may not have a huge amount of time to study at once. Maybe they can study 15 minutes here, a half hour here, they're on the go, they have to pick up their kids at school, or they're commuting to work on a train and they don't want to pull out their laptop and lug it around all day. Our users can download the UWorld MBE QBank on their smartphone or tablet and be able to use all of these features and practice questions whenever it benefits them the best. Great. We have interviewed other MBE um, providers and experts on the podcast, and everyone has an opinion on how many questions students should target doing during their bar prep. Um, what does kind of you world say is the ideal number of targeted questions for your bar prep? Yeah, that's always the kind of the million dollar question that students want to know. If I, if I do this many questions, or how many questions do I need to do in order to, to pass? And 
there is no set number of questions that, that guarantee success. Obviously, we believe that the more that you do, the better off you're going to be because you'll have more experience with different types of questions. You won't be surprised on exam day if they ask you, will the defendant prevail in, in her motion for summary judgment because you've seen that before. And of course, you get exposed to more different legal concepts when, the more that you do. Um, so we don't have a set number of questions that we recommend, but we do emphasize that it's not just the number of questions that you complete, but it's also the quality of your review as you review the, a question set or review a practice test. We encourage students to take the time to fully review explanations regardless of whether they got the question right or wrong. You may have gotten a question right because of a good guess. You may have gotten it right for the wrong reason. And so we encourage students to take the time, go through the explanation, and emphasize that more than trying to hit a certain number of questions just to say that you hit a certain number of questions. I think that's fair. I do want listeners to appreciate, though, is when we're talking about doing a lot of questions, we're not talking about like two or 300 or 400. I do hear those numbers come out of students who are not successful on the exam. Oh, yeah. We're talking about like thousands of questions, not like yes. hundreds of questions. So I think the, yes, the yes, goal yes. should be thousands of questions. I'm not saying if you do right. 3,000 questions, you will guarantee that you'll pass because it, as you were saying, it doesn't work that way. It's all about what you do with the study time. But if you find that you are only, you know, building in 400 questions in your study plan um, for the bar, um, unless you're getting an insane pass rate of those questions taken under time conditions in the closed book, that is not going to be mm -hmm. adequate for most people to study for the bar. Oh, absolutely. And not only doing thousands of questions, but making sure that you're doing questions in each subject, in each mm -hmm. subtopic. Um, I've, I've heard horror stories of, you know, students will spend all their time on an area where they, where they may rightfully feel that they're weak in, but neglect another subject, uh, which they didn't spend any time on or very few questions, and it hurt them when it came time to exam day. So make sure you're spreading your time out accordingly, even if you feel strongly in an area do questions so that way you're familiar with it come exam day. And you know, we oftentimes talk to our students about being very aware of what are the most heavily tested topics in all of those subjects, right. which is published by the NCBE. And if you need help convincing yourself that you need to study all seven of those topics, even if you're pretty comfortable <laughs> with them, you need to see that if you get all of the criminal procedure questions right and perfect, you know, and you're just like, oh, I got 100% there, but then I tanked real property, statistically, it's mm -hmm. still probably not going to go well for you. You have to do okay across the subject. So when you see those big differentials on the score reports, which I know are somewhat garbage, because they are really just comparing you to other students, and they're not, you know, raw scores anymore. Um, but I think that you still you know, don't want that huge disparity mathematically that is going to haunt you in your overall score. Oh, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So you mentioned your explanations in New World really follow the IRAC format. One word that students use to describe the answers to me in comparison to some of the other products is they like your visual explanations. I believe I've seen some flow yes. charts and other visual <laughs> diagrams as part of your explanations. <laughs> um, do you think that that's unique to your tool? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's unique to our to our UWorld MBE product in terms of the legal market. It's not unique to UWorld in general. We use visual explanations in all of our products. It started in medicine and nursing, obviously showing different diagrams, showing uh, different visual depictions of, of different conditions. So it was very well adapted to that. And so there was a question when we started the UWorld MBE QBank of how would our visual explanations translate to the, to the bar exam? Um, 
I remember law school. I remember it being very text heavy in books that uh, I remember if it was if there was maybe a pop pop out description of something, they might have a picture of uh, a photograph of something. But that was about it in terms of visuals. A professor might get creative and have a, a flow chart or clip art every now and then. But the law school was very text heavy um, and in bar exam preparation. It is is and was very text heavy so we wanted our product to stand out in the world fashion and so we use visual explanation visuals and hyperlinked images in all of our explanations the you world content team will develop these images will get together and figure out how can we best teach this concept and are there multiple ways to visually depict this concept? Luckily for our students and our, our users, we don't actually develop the visuals. We have a team of <laughs> professional illustrators at UWorld who take our stick figures and our uh, PowerPoint flowcharts and turn them into masterpieces. So uh, you're welcome for that. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that my art is not out, is not out in the public domain. Uh, but yeah, we offer a, a wide variety. We use tables. Uh, for example, we have a, a, a table that encompasses the different types of homicide, a common law homicide that students will have to memorize for the MBE. We use flow charts. We have a flow chart on standing so students can walk through and decide whether the individual has standing if it's a con law question. We use timelines. This is very important when it comes to real property to determine who has possession or who has title to property at any point in time. And then we have our full picture illustrations, which will depict what is going on in the fact pattern and give students a visual that they can remember and have it come through when they're doing a question later on. They can think back to that visual and it will become clear to them what the what the rule is and jog their memory a bit so yeah we're very excited that that students have been have been liking the visuals and we're going to continue to develop new visuals new mediums so that we can teach as effectively as possible that's great the other day my four-year-old drew a picture of a person and i was like that ah, that's pretty much what my uh-huh drawings of people look like <laughs> so, yeah yeah i uh I, I i'm like, right there with you i <laughs> yeah i uh when i first started submitting image requests to our illustrators i always got an email back asking me what is this like they couldn't understand what it, so then i had to start labeling things right and, you know saying like this is a person this is this is what they're they're kicking and yeah so uh I'm glad. I'm glad that those are shredded once. Yeah. Once they s- create the visuals. Fair point. It's good that that's not part of your <laughs> annual review. Is like, how's your art portion of your uh, of your job going? Oh yeah, I would have been. I've been <laughs> fired long ago. So. <laughs> so a lot of students that we um, work with, and a lot of students that listen to this podcast, um, are folks who are working and studying for the bar. Um, often for six months or more. That's becoming more and more common. Mm -hmm. So how long can students get access to UWorld? And is it possible to extend access beyond kind of the typical few month bar season? And how do you think students can effectively use the tool to study over longer study periods? Yeah, so students can access UWorld. They can get early access. Uh, Like right now, we're, we're offering our early access for the July uh, 2023 bar exam. Had to think of the year there. I know, my, right? It's still strange. My year's to say mixed it. up. I know. Yep. I know. We're at the end of we're at the end of January. I should know this by now. But <laughs> so <laughs> we'll students just can... we'll get really good at 2023 until it's time to start talking about <laughs> yeah. 2024. That's always that's always how it goes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, students can get access right now. They can sign up for early bar prep. Get the UWorld MBE Q Bank today and start preparing for the the July. Uh, 2023 exam or they can wait and they can get access in March uh, as part of our traditional bar exam season uh, because we do realize that each person is different has has different commitments they may decide that they wanted to sit for the February exam and then realize that 
it wasn't going to be possible. They had uh, a situation arise, and so they need to extend that. Our users can always contact our customer support team, and we're very willing to work with each individual based on his or her needs. Uh, this was a big, a big issue, of course, in 2020 when uh, the bar exams were administered in different months and delayed. And so we're, we're very willing to work with each individual uh, to give them the access that they need uh, when they need it. And it, I think it is effective to use over the longer study periods uh, if it's a, for six months because you don't have, you can spread out your studying, you can take the time to develop your outline, create your flashcards, and have time to also give, give yourself time to go through all of the questions that we offer, and then go back to the questions that you you missed or you want you wanted to test yourself again on. Um, I think it's a great it's great for students to start studying as early as possible. And um, some providers do an additional fee for that early access or a second quote unquote season is kind of how we talk about it. Um, are there additional fees to get that early access? Yeah, so it is a little bit a little bit more expensive. Uh, right now, we're offering our early prep, which is immediate access through Jul- through the end of July, for uh, for a little a little bit more than we're offering our traditional access, which begins on March first. Um, okay. So there is that. We just ask students to to note what exam they're taking. Um, mm-hmm. it, it has something to do with the licensing of the questions, and we just need to know that to report to the NCBE. Great. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, there's a there's all this license tracking that all of us who license those MBE questions have to do. <laughs> so it's it's all it, there's a lot of yeah. uh, record keeping that goes on in the background <laughs> to, exactly. to keep everything straight. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that you world acquired Themis Bar Prep back in 2000. How has the Themis experience? Themis has been around um, for quite a while since really the early yeah. part of when I started doing this work. Um, how has it changed for students now that it's under the U world umbrella? Yeah, so it's been a tremendous collaboration, uh, and I think it's fantastic for for students and faculty that U world and Themis have teamed up in the bar review field. As you mentioned, Themis has been around uh, now for for over uh, almost 15 years, I believe, and they're the premier bar prep company with tremendous developers who have dedicated their careers to helping students pass the exam. Themis has offered a full bar review course. So not only does that cover the MBE, but that covers the MEE, the essay portion, and the MPT, the practical skills component of the bar exam, as well as state-specific resources. So Themis brought all of this experience, all of these great developed products to the table, and we wanted to combine that with UWorld's innovation, with the visuals, with the detailed full explanations, uh, the definition links and, and the flashcard features and everything else to create the gold standard in legal education. Uh, Students that are in the Themis Bar Review course will have access to the UWorld MBE QBank. The questions in the Themis Bar Review for the MBE will be updated with UWorld style explanations. So they'll have the visuals, they'll have the the features that they see with the UWorld style explanations. And we've been working together to enhance the MEE and the MPT resources so that users will have better study materials. They'll be able to have a better understanding of the grading process and get better feedback uh, on how to improve their scores. And so far, we've received a lot of great feedback from students and faculty uh, and are committed to continue to enhance the user experience. In the same vein, we're really excited about the changes that are coming to the bar exam with NextGen, which uh, the NCBE announced that, I know you have a separate podcast on this, so I'll be brief, but uh, that the NCBE announced that NextGen, the practical, that the bar exam is gonna go toward a more practical skills-based approach. And they're slated to roll this out in the July cycle of the 2026 bar exam. 
So you were at Themis since June of, of 2021. We've been working on developing next-gen style questions and resources for students. We've developed a, we've developed a task force. We pilot tested some of our questions and are actively working on updating our content based on what the NCBE releases. Great. Yes, it is going to be fascinating to see how all of the next gen stuff rolls out. <laughs> it will. There's yes, still so a lot of open questions <laughs> on what that test is going to look like. I just read their update that they sent out yesterday. <laughs> so um, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting time. Yes, yeah, just waiting. Every time I get a, an email uh, from the NCBE, I immediately open it. It's it's uh, becoming a little obsessive at this point, but I got <laughs> to see, right? see what they're releasing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So everyone that I have on the podcast who's a lawyer, um, I like to mm-hmm. share some kind of best practices or lesson learned from your own kind of reflection on the past. So when you took the bar exam, I think you said you took the UBE, it was it in... Um, Oh my gosh, now I'm just Nebraska. Blanking on it. Nebraska. I was like, it starts with an N. Yes. I was going through all my end <laughs> states. Um, <laughs> is there anything you wish you had done differently or you would have told or you would tell your younger self today? Yeah. Um, I, I Looking back, one thing I would tell myself is to start studying earlier. Mm-hmm. I did not really have an understanding of what the bar exam was. Certainly not when I was in law school. I was focused Mm -hmm. in law, just on my law courses. The bar exam was something that, you know, I'd worry about once I graduated. Uh, And so I wish I would have started studying earlier. And not necessarily the black letter law that I I learned during my bar prep uh, time, but just becoming familiar with the test itself. So exposing myself to more multiple choice questions essays and MPTs just to get a good sense of what the test is going to look like because mm-hmm. during my first couple of weeks of, of bar prep I was really trying to learn two different things. I was trying to learn what the black letter law was which is in itself very very stressful to do but I was also mm-hmm. trying to learn what this test was and how and just become familiar with it. So I wish I would have done that earlier, especially in my third year of law school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just having a um, chat with someone who was a third year yesterday Mm -hmm. about getting familiar with the performance test portion during his final semester of law school. Um, His school did not offer any early bar prep programming. And you know, I was like, you can knock this part out. You can feel so much better oh, yeah. going into the summer yeah. if you invest a little <laughs> bit of time. I'm talking about even just, you know, 20 hours over the semester. That's 20 hours you don't have to study over the summer. So it is, exactly. I think, most of us um, who do this sort of work feel the benefit of um, starting earlier, although I know no one is excited to study for the bar exam. <laughs> so it can be a tough pill to swallow. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things you just got to hold your nose and and dive in. And, you know, most of our listeners are studying for the bar exam or gearing up to study. What three pieces of advice generally would you like to give our listeners? So the first thing I would say is that it's a marathon, not a sprint. I know that's cliche, but it really is. (laughs) If I've started running half marathons in the past year because I needed something to do, needed to get outside. So Mm -hmm. I started training for those and I realized right away that I could not run the race distance at the race pace during the first few weeks of my training. I Mm -hmm. would have, yeah, it's just not going to happen. You need to build up to it over time. So Mm -hmm. don't go out and do a 200 question set on your first day of bar prep Um, You're just going to burn yourself out, and you don't want to do that, especially that early on. So take the time, learn the material, and don't try to do too much all at once, which kind of goes into my second point, which is take time for yourself during bar prep. It's an extremely stressful time. A lot of students who sit for the July exam have about three months from when they graduate to the actual exam to learn or relearn as much 
information as they possibly can for this exam. And I always remember during the first couple of weeks of bar prep, I would feel guilty if I wasn't studying. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I could be doing this, I could be doing this. But I learned pretty quickly that I needed time to step away from studying. I needed time to go work out or watch TV in the evenings. Um, um, I needed time to eat and, and go and get <laughs> some sun. And so I, I, I want s- students to remember that you need to take some time for yourself. Your brain needs a break to process information. So you need to do that. And also, you don't forget about your loved ones who are there for you along the way. Um, mm-hmm. It's easy to really just get so focused on this exam that you forget about that there's people out there who love and care about you uh, who want you to succeed on this exam and so take some time to spend with them uh, and also set bound ba- you can set boundaries with them too you can say look i i have to study for x amount of time and then make sure once that time is over that you are going and, and spending time with them so i would say to do that And then my last piece of advice, which is just kind of a a broad, general piece of advice for all students, is that this test, this bar exam, does not define who you are. Mm -hmm. Whether you pass on your first attempt or you need to take the exam more than once, you can still have a very successful career, whether that be practicing law, whether that's in uh, a job that's JD preferred, or in a completely different area of law. Um, I would recommend legal education. That's a great area to get into <laughs> if, you're, if, it's so, if it's so interests you. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it, it's easy to, to think if you don't succeed the first time you take the bar exam that you're a failure and you're not. Mm-hmm. It doesn't define who you are, doesn't define you as a person or anything like that. So just remember that as you as you take the exam and then as you're anxiously awaiting your results for those weeks or months uh, for your, to see if you passed. I think all of those are really great points. And, you know, I'll share a story that I've shared on the podcast before, back in the dark ages when I was studying for the bar exam. Um, I, my parents, who are both lawyers, were visiting. It was 4th of July weekend. 4th of July is always kind of a tough milestone, I think, for a lot of folks studying for the July bar because you have... um, you're exhausted, you see the finish line, but you don't feel ready. It's just, it's always, (laughs) um, 4th of July is just a tough week. (laughs) It's a tough week. Everybody's celebrating. (laughs) And I remember turning to my mom and saying like, it was a beautiful day in the Bay Area. My parents had come up for the weekend. And I said, all I want to do is not study today and just go sit in the sun and have a glass of wine and just talk about something else. And she was like, great, Mm -hmm. we should do that. And I was like, oh, we can't do that. We'll fail the bar. And she said, taking one day off because you're feeling burned out is not why you will fail the bar. <laughs> She's like, doing that yeah. for a week, maybe. Yeah. And um, that wisdom is something that I continue to take with me through you know, working with students now for a decade plus. This idea of listening to yourself and being very aware um, and, you know, and checking in with yourself. And when it is too much, you need to, you know, thoughtfully march your way out. Um, mm-hmm. However, be aware of self-sabotaging behavior. So one, yeah, you know, day a week, you know, to go outside, to spend time with loved ones, to go to a family wedding. I always know that the summer season is always tough because a lot of folks, especially if you're in your kind of 20s and 30s period where a lot of people are getting married. I was here, they're like, I was at a wedding and a wedding and a wedding. Um, you can still do that stuff if you plan around it. Yeah. I don't think you have to say, I can't do anything. But then you need to say, how am I going to be effective in the other times? Is it going to be doing some early bar prep? So I can take yep. two weekends off during bar prep. Um, you know, this careful planning can make it feel like it's not running your life. And I think that is... You know, it is a powerful milestone in your legal career. But as you said, it is not the end all be all. Yeah, exactly. Well, we are running out of time. If any of our listeners would like to learn more about UWorld, Ryan, how can they do that? Yeah. So you can find more information about the UWorld MBEQ Bank at legal.uworld.com. 
and you can also find more information about the full Themis Bar Review course at themisbar.com. Great. And if any of our listeners are interested in trying out UWorld, you can do so using this coupon code for 10% off the purchase price. The code will also be in the show notes, but it is all capital letters, no spaces, BTU World, B-T-U-W-O-R-L-D 10, um, all one word, B-T-U World 10. And we hope you check it out. And with that, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate you taking some time to chat with me about the bar today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Lee. Absolutely. If you enjoyed this episode of the Bar Exam Toolbox podcast, please take a second to leave a review and rating on your favorite listening app. We'd really appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Allison at lee at barexamtoolbox.com or allison at barexamtoolbox.com. Or you can always contact us via our website contact form at barexamtoolbox.com. Thanks for listening and we'll talk soon. Mm-hmm.